talking, 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 talking. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hey, folks, and welcome back to the best show ever podcast. The podcast about the best concerts that people have ever seen in their lives. I'm your host, Cam Hurt, and uh, this is another cool, cool episode. This is a guy who I wanted on season one, to be honest, but we didn't really have too much of a relationship other than him, not to spoil it, giving me pieces of baklava after fish shows. That man is none other than our guest today, Roy Donk, the, the CEO and proprietor of Good Baklava, Baklava Labs. Um, there's been a phenomenon that's kind of happened over the fish community over the last couple of years here. We have had, um, that, there's always people selling awesome stuff on lot. You can get a grilled cheese with bacon and every motherfucking bite. You can get jerry rolls. You can get, I mean, there's so much good food. There's so much good merch. That's what these shows, half of it is all about like being able to go to see these vendors who are selling things to get around to every show to make themselves uh, a little bit of money in between each stop just to make sure that they can get tickets and food and lodging and all that kind of stuff. And Roy on this episode talks about that hustle. And he has got one of the most famous hustles in the history of uh, at least in the history of 3.0 fish is the baklava hustle where he's, he, he sells baklava outside of fish shows. If you haven't seen him at a show, I, I mean, I don't, if you, or if you haven't seen one of his, his baklava henchmen at a show, I mean, I don't know what you've been missing. Um, but Roy talks about getting around to fish shows. He talks about um, the scene and, and, you know, working your way through it. Uh, he talks about good times, talks about bad times, uh, but he's an awesome interview. Um, and a, a budding buddy we are becoming friends and that's that's uh stoked for me because then i'm i might even get a free slice of baklava here and there which is awesome um he's a great dude it's a great interview uh, i've also got an interview out right now with his good friend sarah elaz who is a musician uh she works in the music uh industry as well um and and they hang out and go to the fish shows together so listen to both these episodes and just imagine the fun that these two are having at fish shows together uh, while Sarah's dancing and Roy's flipping desserts. But uh, a couple shout outs I wanted to give on this episode are just a couple of other people who are, are making cool stuff within the community. Um, one of those people is definitely someone who you'll see on fish lots uh, and other lots. Um, and if you don't follow him on Instagram already, you should. New Springfield Boogie. Um, fantastic account does a lot of parody stuff between our world and the Grateful Dead and Fish world and then uh, Simpsons. Uh, and so if you're a fan of those things, which a lot of us are, he crosses it over so well and so artfully. Um, he's got great apparel. He's got great merch, got great art um, and just funny stuff coming out of that account all the time too. If you're just looking for more funny shit, New Springfield Boogie, um, check him out. His stuff is awesome. Um, and then also kind of in that crossover world, uh, just changed over his account name, uh, but now it's Worlds Collide. Uh, and Worlds Collide makes a bunch of cool uh, designs and merch and apparel that um, a lot of it is dead related. A lot of it is talking heads related. Um, they have gotten, they've included uh, the Pink Panther in on their uh, art and, you know, their crossover stuff, but they, they've made a bunch of great t-shirts over the last year. Um, they've sent me some of those, uh, and I wear them all the fucking time. Check out worlds collide and worlds with a Z, uh, is how you're going to find them. But what you're finding right now is a great conversation with Roy Donk, the good baklava guy. Um, sit back, relax, enjoy this episode, uh, this conversation that I had with Roy, uh, but first here's a little bit of music from Loom with the song, What I Mean. Ted, uh, I, I interviewed Sarah this morning. Oh, um, awesome. Your boy, your dog. 
Um, oh, you see him in the she's back? great. I say what's the oh, I, I, I see your dog. I was calling Sarah your dog, but I, I also Sarah's see your, your real your real life dog right there. Hi, Sarah is my real life dog. <laughs> she's the best. She said, "Enjoy, Roy." Nice. I was like, uh, man, that'd be the we, we live near each other now, so it's like they're like my 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 not my only Brooklyn friends, but my like realist Brooklyn friends. I see you've been hanging with them and cooking stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. And chilling, well, man. Yeah, I love to cook, and like so does Lonnie. So it's a big big bonder we got, and we were also in Japan together, uh, for like for only like a week and a half, or maybe under a week and a half. Um, that that was pretty sweet. Yeah, you guys aren't just like grilling burgers. Uh, you're like <laughs> you're putting together some. Like really a, nice he's dishes. like a real cook. I used to be a real cook, but it took me like um, I've been out of like the the industry. I'd call it outside of baklava for like <laughs> like six years. Yeah, last uh, no last real restaurant. Yeah, last real restaurant gig I had was like six years ago. But like four years ago, I was working like a a kebab shop. I'm like, this is freaking awesome, you know. But I used to work in real restaurants. It was just like. It's been a while, you know, so I'm, I, I have a kitchen now. I've been traveling on and off for the past four years. So having a kitchen right over here has been, it's, it's a lot of work to build it out. And how, like, I know how it should be. It's just a matter of time how it, till it's, till it's there. The actual, yeah, your setup, all that setup yeah, stuff. Getting Dude, there. yeah, work at, working in restaurants is tough. It's tough it's life. It's really tough, man. It's really my, tough my, life. <laughs> my folks still own a restaurant back in Wisconsin, and that's what I did like yes. all the way through high school and college and work, like working there and stuff. And the whole thing was like, you're not owning a restaurant. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like the whole, the whole thing is like, you will not. That's like, you can get at in, first that's like the dream. Food. That's like the dream. And then you're like, whoa, this is not the dream. But like, then, not, then it's like, what's the point, you know? Yeah. And all, all of our family friends were like, you know, we've got this great recipe and we were thinking about opening up a restaurant, you know? Oh, here, here, I'm going to give you like, that. I'm going to give you million dollar advice that you only have to pay me like 500 bucks for like, and it's going to save you millions of dollars and make you millions of dollars. <laughs> Don't open a restaurant. Now pay me, you know, <laughs> keep eating at restaurants. Yeah. Keep eating at restaurants. restaurants. Don't open one. You're good. <laughs> You're good. Exactly. But, yeah, man. Is that, um, but I got notes for you for the shows. <laughs> I was going to say, we're going to talk. We were going to, we're going to talk about shows. This is the best show ever podcast, but I got to talk. I got to ask about the back a lot. I got to know, oh, uh, how did that get started? How did you start doing that? Are we going to go? Oh, we're live right now. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, uh, nice. Right um, on, right on. Yeah, yeah. We're live. No, we are. No doubt, no doubt. So Baklava <laughs> started. Let me get uh, let me get some leftovers from New Year's. This shit lasts forever. Um, Baklava I know, dude, started. I wish mine got in the mail. Oh. oh, it didn't show up yet? Bummer. We'll virtually it, have some for you. It looks beautiful. Thank you, sir. Uh, Baklava got started Shoreline Night 2. And in my uh, best show ever notes, Shoreline Night 1 is in here with references to to Baklava. Basically, we found, rewind a couple shows. Uh, We found this kid, Eli, on Facebook. He's like, he, he posts on Facebook, we're on our way to the airport or like on our way to this rental car. And this kid posts on some Facebook group, I'm 20 years old, fish is the greatest thing that ever happened in the entire world. I need a ride to, I, I need a ride to the gorge. And we're like, pick him up, dude, like pick him up, you know? Yeah. Um, so we get there and this kid has like one bag and we're just like, yeah, like we'll give you a ride. Like, where are you camping? He's like, I don't know. I have this tent, you know, like, all right, you're in with us, dude. He's a super cool kid. And then gorge crush gorge was awesome it was my first first gorge he did the whole run with like my big extended crew it was like probably 30 of us all camped next to each other it was a couple rvs awesome run and then we're like yeah like shoreline's up next how are you getting shoreline and you're just like he's gonna hitchhike you know like st- sticks out his thumb and we're like dude we got you like you're in you gotta ride you know so like two day or yeah so like Fast forward past the first show of Shoreline, uh, day two, um, we're in this like Middle Eastern grocery store that serves like Mexican food. Also, they have like a some weird California shit, and like right. I start like giving it to Eli, like bro, like you're broke, you need a freaking hustle. Like, what are you gonna sell, man? You're on tour. Like everyone sells something. Like don't sell drugs. Uh, maybe sell like sell beer, sell water, sell Gatorade, sell grilled cheese. Like, what are you gonna sell, dude? 
It's like, oh, I don't know, man. I don't know what to sell, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, can I just start like, giving more suggestions? And we're in this Middle Eastern grocery store. And they have a wall of baklava. And it's big, I remember yes. the sign. It's like big yellow, like kind of like the hot dog. Like red sign, yellow, yellow Middle Eastern cool font, baklava. And like just walls of it, just containers. Like, bro, freaking sell baklava. And it's like, no, yeah. I, don't know, I don't even know what that is. Like, I don't think that'll sell, man. Like. No, nah, I don't know. And I'm just like, and all of a sudden, like, numbers are, like, going on in my head. Because I like selling shit, you know? Like, numbers yeah, are going on in my head. And I'm like, that's going to work, man. It's funny. It's different. I think this will work. Because I had already tried. I was going to, like, bring bagels from, like, the East Coast to the West Coast or the Gorge. And then I'm like, nah, bagels go stale after, like, a day. And then they're done. I don't want to be sitting on, like, a bag full of stale bagels that I brought from the Gross. East Coast, you know? And, like, yeah. also, like, the margins kind of suck. I'm like, dude, I think baklava is the one because I got, I love baklava already. And I'm just like, dude, like, this is gonna, it, it stays good forever. You know, it's like, it's baklava, man. Like, it's funny. <laughs> and so I go to the guy, I'm like, all right, I got this burrito. I'm getting this Gatorade. Let's, let's work out some biz on baklava. Like, hey, and the guy's like cracking up. There's like a bunch of hippies in and out. And it's like, we're just one of the bunch. He's like, all right, like, let's work out a deal. I forgot what I paid, but like, I got, I think, 100 pieces of baklava to start. And I only brought half of it because I'm like, oh, I don't want to, I'm, I'm like on foot. And I'm like, Eli, I'm going to freaking show you, dude. I'm going to show you this is going to sell. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. Uh, and then, so I bring like half of it. I get dropped off and I'm like, I don't want to be stuck with all of it if it doesn't sell. And then I'll save the other half for, for, for dicks. And I'll like, I'll, like, I'll throw it in someone's car and like, we'll bring it to dicks. And then, so I bring the half of it, immediately sell all, like sell, sell all yeah. of it get a poster i'm like first four i i approach like 10 people and five of them buy like and the, the exact script goes over and over again they're just like wait you're selling baklava i'm like yeah i'm like is there drugs in it? i'm like not even i'm like no nope. hilarious i'm like i know like how much is it? I'm like one for three two for five i'm like fuck it i'll buy some like you take that i'm like totally dude you know like, yeah dude. Call, dude. you know <laughs> and we sold out the first half call the crew i'm like bring more <laughs> bring more and uh they show up Sell, sold all of it before the show i'm like there's a picture of it i don't have it handy uh maybe i can find it just like counting the money cracking up like baklava sells a lot uh let's see shoreline that's Mountain so view. The, the picture is so funny <laughs> Mountain like... view. here it is dude just cracking up counting <laughs> bills you know <laughs> online with with the print with the print you know i got the print in the process you know it's like perfect setup like everyone's waiting here there's no food you know like sell to everyone on the line and buy the print you know and yeah. then i'm like shit dude i gotta go and then like shoreline crush or like i got some notes on that best show ever uh yeah but what's it called we go to dicks the next the next day and i'm like dude i need some fucking baklava <laughs> like i'm googling like denver wholesale baklava like first first couple <laughs> results i have bullshit bullshit like distributor and then there's like a, a phone number it's just like this guy's number is like dino and then i like dino and then like a random number and i just like 11 o'clock at night on i guess thursday i'm like bro like god dino do you have baklava texting I'm like immediately like millisecond always i'm like sick i got the guy like, work out it work out a deal um i bought i want to say like 300 and, I, and then i kind of had some like second doubts i'm like maybe it's just california stuff like i don't know about you know so i'm like all right i'll get like 280 pieces and like reserve the right to buy more and he's like dude you have to buy everything you need right now because it's holiday weekend and i'm out i'm like all right fine i'll get the 280 and i ended up also like walking past the popeyes and just being like dude i feel like i could also sell spicy chicken sandwiches right now and have like a deal so like that's what it also started as is, like spicy chicken sandwiches and baklava so I have this like big ass plastic bag, like with a carabiner on like freaking belt. Like it's so just like loaded up, like a baklava on the hand. I could easily like grab the sandwiches and shit. And uh, those also sold, those also sold. And then my, where I was staying was at my friend's house and he had like some Greek diner set up, Middle Eastern, Mediterranean, Yaya Cafe right by his house. And I go to this guy, I'm like, bro, like, here's the deal. I'm new to this baklava industry, but like, I might need a shit ton of baklava from you if this all sells. He's like, dude, here's my number. Just like, tell me ASAP. I'm like, I'll tell you as soon as I know. Like, Texas guy, like, Saturday night at like four in the morning, like, bro, I need more baklava immediately. <laughs> and he's just like, dude, I got you. I got you. Like, come in at this time. I'm like, sweet. And I go in and like, this is dicks. 
and like he cuts them like way too big i'm like bro i can't like it's like dude i got orders like you can like cut that in the back i'm like bro like, yeah i'm like cutting this maybe that's the first restaurant the last restaurant i really worked in was this restaurant and like he put you in the kitchen just, like, and made cutting, you cut yeah, the stuff in the back, <laughs> yeah in the back of this denver kitchen just slicing up baklava's and shit and uh it all sold man and like a new identity was born you know um the hot dog came on fall tour 2021 um i tried doing sandwiches again at, at chula vista which was really a bad move i'm like i'm gonna work really hard in chula vista but like i used to live in san diego for like in san diego for like four years so it's oh, like sick. a catch-up show and i'm like yeah damn like i have all this shit i gotta sell I'm like hey man how's it going how's it going how's it going like just like oh good to see you here's peace here's peace here's peace you know it's yeah. like at the end i'm like dude i don't really make any money i have all this stuff i'm like I'm just like, exhausted for mental interact, like, like personal interactions. Yeah. But, uh, fall tour is where it started on summer tour 21 fall tour is where it, um, I don't know. Found its footing. Yeah. That's yeah. found its footing blossomed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, uh, the interaction part of it, you are incredible at, like I I've witnessed it more, more than one time where you're just surrounded by people and dude, You've you you've given out a lot of I've watched you give out a lot of free baklava to people. That's, I say I got I've gone through I want to say like two hundred and twenty thousand pieces of baklava since starting, but like I haven't sold two hundred and twenty thousand pieces no, of baklava. Right. I'm not, I wouldn't say even half of that, you know. And it's you fun, didn't get it's every fun to give away. Dollar. I try to give away to uh. Here's a good story. We're at um fall tour, and it was at the LA show, and like I walked past the whole green crew. And they're just like, after the show, I'm like, yo, Baklava, man, when are you going to join the crew, man? When are you going to join Green Crew? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I got to fucking work. I'm sorry, dude. And uh, then at Santa Barbara, there's like the hardest ticket, one of the hardest, not the hardest ticket of my life, but like one of them. Like, this was a tough ticket. Yeah. Um, I didn't get to go, go to, to that one. What's that? I didn't get you to go to that one. Oh, you yeah. didn't get in? Yeah, no. Dude, I, dude, freaking Green Crew came through. Let's check this out. Like, they're doing Sick. their ticket pass out. And I'm like, I'm walking past and I'm like, can I join Green Crew? I'm like, dude, you had your, and like the homie Casey, the homie is just like, dude, you had your freaking chance last night, man. I land. I'm like, <laughs> dude, I blew it. I'm like, I fucking blew it, man. And like, the bus came by, dude. Out, yeah, I should give out all the tickets. And then, like, he gives this nice pep talk. He's like, look out for your fellow man. Like, if you could stub in, like, stub in, like, sneak past and shit. I'm like, this guy, like, this dude's all right, man. Like, I, obviously, I don't deserve this Green Crew ticket. I've, I mean, I, I like picking up trash on the floor. Like, I don't know. I, I go dumpster diving sometimes. I love trash, dude. And like, uh, yeah. <laughs> what's it called? I all day looking for a ticket. I'm wearing the hot dog suit, not really selling much. And like, I go, it's showtime. And like, I go try to like bribe my way in. There's like two old people. And then this like young kid taking tickets. I'm like, all right, let's try the old, let's try the young kid. Like go with two, they're still doing PTBM. So like hundred dollar bill, baklava's in the car, wearing the hot dog suit have a have the ptbm the hundred dollar bill and he's like trying to scan i'm like bro like take the money you know he's like bro like sir your ticket's not scanning i'm like dude like take the money like, the hundred the hundred I'm like, you know and, and he's like oh no 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 i can't do that i'm like loser you know like no, but you you can though but yeah, you yeah, can yeah. Though. <laughs> you know i don't know respect the job like all right fine you're good i'm like yeah, all right yeah, we'll, try, yeah. we'll try the old people we'll try to like i tried to pay my way and i'll sneak in you know so like i walk around uh intentionally wore the hot dog suit so i'm like two different people now it's like took off the hot dog suit walk back see the lane to like you know sneak my way in like I, and, and i saw it i'm like walking up i see it i see it i'm like all right I, I got this you know and like as i'm about to like make the move into the next dimension um casey from from green crew is like baklava man he's standing on this like ledge so he's like elevated like two foot ledge just like up and he just like pass it like jesus freaking out uh, outstretching <laughs> ticket 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 i'm like bro i am in green crew for life bro I get for life and, now and like uh it's awesome it was it was it was super cool to get in that night um did green crew after and now as a thank you to green crew because it's hard to like you're working and you want to clean up the like it's one or the other like sometimes they gotta work so i just like anyone doing green crew gets free baklava it's like the rule now but that's a, 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 a long, long version of the story. Just say like, yeah, I like to give free to a baklava for, for their hard work, but there's a reason behind it outside. They're doing a good job and the Lord's I, work. There, 
there is a and that's a good reason to do it i feel like you have given at least me free baklava before we knew each other just for like quoting something to you or like just being <laughs> chill just being chill for a second yeah, hanging I mean, for a second it's it's weird it's a weird dynamic if people like and I, and I don't only sell baklava at fish. Like, I, I'll go to Central Park. I'll go to, like, other festivals. I like selling baklava to, like, random New Yorkers. And people, like, yeah. I've had this girl just, like, she has, like, a, star, a big Starbucks coffee. And, like, she's like, how much is it? I'm like, like how much is it? Like, kind of, like, with, like, a bad attitude with him. Just, like, five bucks or five for 20, you know? She's like, I'm not going to pay five bucks for a piece of baklava. I'm like, yo, you pay, like, ten for a coffee, you know? And she's like, well, yeah, what? Right. I'm like, she's like, just give me one for free. I'm like, hell no. Like, no, like, no, like, your attitude gets kind of like, like, if you're cool and you're like, dude, I only got a dollar. It looks really good, though. It's like, all right, dude, it's, it's now a dollar, you know? Like, oh, fuck, I don't have I any gotcha. money. If, I, if I've if i made the money for the day, it's like, it's all yours, you know? It's all about the Probably attitude, you know? What price is market value based on like many variables? It's it, that is true. The market value does is based on many variables. I, uh, since moving out to LA now, sometimes I will be going to shows with people who haven't ever seen fish. Like I didn't have to do that back in Chicago. Like I had my whole crew there. And so after Hollywood bowl, I was like, you're, you know, just during the day, we're like, all right, yeah, we're going to see the show. We're absolutely getting baklava after. And people just kind of let that like go like these people who had never been to a show. And they're like, they're like, I, I don't know what Cam's talking about. And then like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Speaking> Chinese man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll get baklava i don't is that a fish reference is that a song i have no idea um and then like afterwards you're standing outside and they're like dude you mentioned baklava earlier in the day and they're <laughs> you're you're not serious that there's a guy out here selling delicious this isn't just fucking baklava this is like oh good, it's good like, man it took a while to get down. it's like that's why i yeah. call it good like baklava like this dude like this is like 40 layers I mean, so, I mean it lasts a while this is like new year's baklava so it's a little like it's getting there like this is imported from Turkey. The guy like ships it on bake to New Jersey. Uh, I went to the warehouse in Turkey last year. It was freaking sick. They were like really, really, really happy to meet a white Jewish kid from uh from <laughs> Passaic, New Jersey. He's just like, wait, so you what? And, like I pull up wearing the hot dog suit. And it's like, like none of them. Only one speaks like half English, but they like orally, you know, like <laughs> yeah, uh, right. so they shit. Sick operation they got going. Um, they they supply me. They do all my shipping as well. Uh, good partnership we have, but it's, it's definitely good baklava. I haven't been I haven't been eating much because I'm on a, like new get, my New Year's diet. It's like really really. It started like end of the year, so it's like still going strong. Uh, but it's it's fire. It's hard to look at, you know. Dude, it's one of the. Be I mean, it's one of the best parts of our scene is the baklava thing. It's oh, the thanks, coolest, man. and I'm it just, and you're just, you're right, it, team, bro. <laughs> you know? Yeah, dude, stick with <laughs> it, and it just it does fit like this like. It, you know, just like how fish sometimes feels like, who is this for? This is just for me. Like baklava, it's like, who? No one would have thought, like, yeah, dude. I got lucky with we'll it. Sell man. A bunch I, got, of sheets. I definitely yeah. got lucky with it, man. <laughs> you know? It just, it's it, just it, it's fun. Right I love, there. I love eating baklava. Like selling baklava. I named my, this is officially my side hustle for now, unless it like, I don't know, has a second takeoff. Um, but my real company, like my real work, I'm a, I'm a marketer, and uh, I named my company uh, Baklava Labs. So it's just nice. like la layered marketing strategy. Like all the different layers are a different area of your biz, you know? So I'm trying to see, I, I'm going through a rebrand right now, but uh, in, into Baklava Labs, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's something to live, you know? Like I got, I got the tattoo and shit, you know? You got it. I'm here for it. It's, I'm here for it. Got to live it. Layers, just like mm -hmm. Baklava. Life is layers. Layers, dude. Well, thank you for, thank you for humoring me and talking about the Baklava. We are going to talk about your shows now. We, but I we I had I had to discuss the baklava with you. Uh, do you do you remember the first concert you ever saw in your life? First show you ever went to Not ever fish. in your life ever? No, it, unless it was. No, it wasn't fish. <laughs> um, for me, first concert is pretty cringe rocked. Uh, I didn't really have much musical <laughs> guidance growing up as a kid, so I fell into right. like America, you know, like Middle America music, you know. So my first concert was Three Days Grace. I think I was 14. I went with my homie who had gotten his license. And he's like a neighbor that, that I grew up with. I'm still friends with him to this day. He kind of stayed in that. I'll never end up saying this. So like, he kind of stayed in the cringe rock. I mean, he, he, he grew up yeah. a little bit. He's like a metal guitarist. It's like, like yeah, you want to come to my show? I'm like, dude, like, if it's really convenient, you know, I'll go to your, I'll go to your like heavy, yeah. heavy metal show. But we're both in a Three Days Grace. And that was my first show. And it was 
fucking sick, bro. Like I Dude. would go again just because like it was the first one and like I had such a good time. Uh, we like crowd surfed. Like the music was awesome at the time. Like I'd never seen anything like it. It was just like, holy shit, this is live music. There's like other fans. I was like a young kid. So I'm like, dude, it's like four or 5,000 people just like all fucking vibing out to this, you know? And yeah. I don't, I don't listen to these guys anymore, but, and I used to be like, yeah, I wouldn't like, I'd be a little embarrassed about like the cringe rock, you know, it's like cringe rock, you know? Yeah, and like, now I'm like, dude, no, that was, that was an awesome time, man. You know? And it kind of set life, life changing. You know, anything you remember is somewhat life changing in my opinion. Totally, dude. And that had its place, dude. What was this like yeah, 08, exactly. 09? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Something like this that. Like, like 08, 09. Yeah, I'm like 20, I'm 28 now. What year is it? Yeah, it's 08, 08 09. Maybe, maybe a little earlier. I was going to Chevelle shows back then, too, dude. Like, you know, nothing to be in Whatever. It's not, a, yeah. I, I, it, it is the most white guy thing you can do. Oh, 100%. Maybe outside of fish. Maybe outside of fish, but that's, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> you know, but like different. It's a color color wave. No, but my my uh my co- my client I was just visiting in um in Virginia. He brought me to speaking of cringe rock. He brought me to he brought me to Breaking Benjamin, dude, and that was not yeah. as good as not as good as freaking Three Days <laughs> Grace, dude. There's no flow, like the same crowd. No, but there was like no flow. Too much, like I don't know, like when Fish does a bunch of banter, it's like hell yeah, they're talking, you know, like yeah, these guys are just talking too much. It's like two two and a half minute song, four minutes of banter, rinse and repeat, and it was uh, I was like a little thrown off by it. It's grateful to go and grateful for the experience, like bond with a client over music and stuff because it's like not related to. They're, they're I'm just like helping run their their marketing program, so I'm grateful for the ticket. Um, grateful to have gone. But the be- I wouldn't. I- I'd sooner see Three Days Grace or Fish again <laughs> before I go to Breaking Benjamin. Like oh, seek out yeah. Breaking Benjamin. I have some problems with those guys, you know. Would you Would you say that's your worst show, the Breaking Benjamin show? I I was texting my friend. I, I think so. I don't think my client's gonna watch this. So I hope if he does, <laughs> I gotta say he's a big fan. He's a big no, fan. No, he of wasn't. He wasn't. He said he wasn't, <laughs> which is like. <laughs> like i don't think he's gonna watch this if he does rob i love you man and i'm grateful for the ticket it's not you it's that you know yeah uh, dude i yeah, had a good time too you know but the company was good i'd say so i'd say so that or like i wrote toronto night I-, I thought it was worst fish show which i don't need to like bog down on the negative i could go into the positive but like worst fish show toronto 19 uh worst show i've ever been to breaking benjamin 2024 four days ago you know i remember being like really like really wanting to go to that toronto show just because like fish is playing in canada and it would be sick and then i was like yeah, yeah. okay yeah <laughs> no, no fish show is bad but we just right. it was a lot of work to get there like we went to bonnaroo and then after was uh the ohio which is the blossom show 2019 was my first tour, like real tour as well i didn't complete the whole thing uh but it was like real real musical event uh, musical adventure fish tour you know i was like 20 23 24 years old uh i was moving from california to new york did like 22 out of 26 shows got arrested found a job oh. uh, went to rehab after it was like real oh. it was real deal fish tour you know for like like this is awesome you know and <laughs> big year it was it was the beginning toronto was like the first one of the first it was like st louis bonnaroo Toronto and then after and like Bonner just took a lot out of me and my crew that I was with so like uh getting there was a lot of work and it was raining through Nashville to get to get to the north and um once we got there it was just like all right and and like there was there was a lot of like first songs uh, at that point I'd only seen like 25 20 30 shows like oh shit dude this is this is my my first like many different songs I'm like hell yeah it's like my first yeah i don't really want it. maybe my first stash i'm like why does this suck dude i know they don't suck but like why is this not hitting right now you know yeah it's, but, that's uh, what it is sometimes it just doesn't hit like a, yeah. yeah it just didn't hit you know or like you pivotal, get really you know? excited yeah like sometimes you'll get like you know you've been dying to see some random song like you just like oh man seven below i cannot wait to see a seven below you get one and you're like all right this isn't the seven below but it's okay yeah. this is a good show okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah 
whatever I mean, it's it is. Still, I mean, I, I met some good friends that I'm still really close with in Toronto. You know, it's just like a, a definitely might have been not my favorite fish show that I've ever been at, but it's still like I'm still really glad I freaking went. There's never been a time where I'm like, I should not, I should not be here right now. Oh um, yeah, dude. I'm sure. I'm sure, there's an opportunity for that for like, oh man, like. I don't have the money for this. And like, there's, I've definitely gone to my fair share of like broke fish shows, you know, or I'm like, I can't afford this, but like, I don't know. There's never been like, Oh, I shouldn't be here right now. You know, that's I mean, how this whole I last be getting year arrested went right now. <laughs> I, that, I shouldn't be getting arrested right now, but like, like stuff like yeah. that, you know, that's real. You're like this. I didn't have to be here for this. Yeah, I wouldn't be getting sure, arrested sure. if I was here for this. Yeah, dude. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, dude. Well, it, it is hard to pick your best show. Um, and you've seen a bunch at this point, all types of shows, even Breaking Benjamin. But uh, yeah, do, you, yeah, yeah. Right. do you have uh, like some honorable mentions that you'd be remiss if you didn't bring them up? For sure. Let me just pause and say, I like your plant setup, dude. I'm like, I'm in a new place and I only have one and it's in my bathroom and I'm like still learning how to take care of plants. But like just quick pause and say like, I'm right behind you. I got to get the plants, man. Um, but this into... is all Jess. This is my girlfriend. She's, oh, nice. she's killing She's killing it with the yeah, setup. Yeah, I gotta make yeah. this place alive, man. Like sooner or yeah. later, you know, it's it's on the it's on the list. But I put one list... show poster up. This one, oh, nice. I put what a show. It? I put a. Sh it, this is a goose show That's that we goose, both went goose, to. Goose. Okay, so cool. it's we we both went right. together. It's it was a beautiful moment. But the rest, everything else that's sick is all hers. And so right on, right on. Is that frameless <laughs> or just a white frame that blends in? White frame. Oh, nice, nice. I was gonna no, white... call out my buddy who had in his RV like this sick freaking Camden 2019 poster just in his RV, just stapled to the wall, you know? Oh, no. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. Like, respect. Uh, People have a uh, meltdown. <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. I'm just like, dude, like, it's this sick print that I've been looking, like, low-key looking for. But, like, I'm, like, mad at you, but I'm glad I'm mad at you for doing that. It's, like, really funny. Yeah. Like, a chunk. You know? A chunk. Yeah. I'm glad it's up, you know? Yeah, um, dude. But yeah, going into shows, honorable mention, I'd say the night one shoreline, you know, like just to get into it, it was like, I, I was living in Mexico and um, I was living in Mexico before this tour, full plans to go back to Mexico after this. Uh, I had this job, I was working at an agency and like fish tour comes back. I'm like immediately messaged like, my boss and like dude like check this shit out because he was like he was cool enough you know and like he was a yeah. musician too he knew if he had seen fish before i'm like check this out and he's like yeah man like you work here you're not like we don't have time it's like start up he's like you're not going on vacation you know like it's been six months since you worked here and uh i'm like well i'm going at least some of them dude so we agreed basically to go that i would go to ac and hershey which was like awesome i got the hershey poster right there uh um, and then like two days after I got back, I thought I did pretty good. But I was like living in Mexico. I went home. My parents live in Pennsylvania. And I'm like, yeah, it's like hybrid vibe. Like this is all I'm doing. I'm not going to do the West Coast leg. Um, and then he comes back. He's like, dude, you're fired. I'm like, sick, bro. Oh. Like, I, didn't know. I was not expecting it, but I was already not really feeling it there. And like, yeah, I was content at this point. Like I'm not going to the gorge. I had never been to the gorge at that point. Never been a shoreline. And uh, at that point, it was Tahoe. Before he like before he can be, it was it was Tahoe. I'd never been, never even been to Tahoe. Period. Let alone see yeah. fish there. And uh, I wasn't gonna go to Dick's. And he can be. I'm like, dude, fuck yeah, bro. Like I like. He's like, I'm I'm so sorry. I'm like, like save it, bro. Like it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Like I didn't want like I wanted to kind of figure something else out and flew to the gorge for it and then did shoreline so it was, it was a mixture of this like starting the baklava thing knowing something new was on the horizon maybe it was baklava related i had like met uh hit up an old person i worked with and i'm like hey I'm, I'm kind of a free agent right now i don't want to come back and work for you but like exploring the freelance world of, of what i really do and he's like yeah i'm interested i'm like dude like the firing is i think the best thing that happened right like this is not a bad thing you know yeah, and I got, I got, I got to the gorge was awesome. And then they switched it from Tahoe to shoreline. And like that night one shoreline was like the best, you know, like it was yeah. just like the best show ever. And I mean, it wasn't, but like it was, you know, um, some stuff I wrote down, like they did the axilla part two, which I now can't stand, you know, I'm waiting for them to go back to the axilla <laughs> one. 
um <laughs> glide and glide and forbins was like first forbins i've ever gotten um i like when they do like songs that i can't like new songs that i'm not a fan of and then just like pull like the wildest jam on them like i'm like i guess i like this song now you know you like it's it just awesome yeah. man uh soul planet was sick they did moonish daydream that's like one of my favorite cover like whenever they play Love that it. sometimes it's better than others but like hell yeah that's why they're closing a set with moonish daydream it's, it's it's always a treat so like that show was like pretty pivotal you know it's like uh, uh it was also like recently so like it wasn't my first sober show um but what's it called it was like one of the first few like hershey night one was like my first like show in recovery i've been sober for like almost february will be like three years um so Congrats, man. thanks man yeah it's a good ride uh <laughs> yeah. yeah it's just like new new sobriety like a lot of new things flowing and like am i in the right place am i doing this right and then like fish like show up to fish take the chance on fish and they just can deliver bro you know like it's yeah awesome, man man they're just like all right like after that night i have confirmed i am in the right place i think i'm doing the right stuff and then like since then it's like i wouldn't take that back for the world like it was the right move oh, you know? yeah. there's nothing like it confirming like six months later a year later two years later like all right it was the right move to like go west after getting fired from your job and then after that i'm like dude i'm gonna stay east I, i'm gonna stay i'm gonna move back to the united states i went back after after dicks like picked up my dog flew back i'm like all right mom and dad i'm back and like i'm gonna stay for a little bit i'm gonna figure something else out I'm like yeah you're you're good you know and it just kept working yeah. kept working out there's challenges but like pivotal pivotal time you know moving back from mexico getting fired starting something new the easier thing would have been finding some other agency and doing the same thing over and over and over but long term that's the harder thing right like yeah exactly it, man like you would have just been spinning your wheels and now you've like paved this whole new route and it yeah i'm sure it wasn't easy at some points that's that's fucking sick dude and no, that's it's a good that's ride, man. It's a good show <laughs> you know it's like yeah the easier route would have been like uh, like not the easier the, the less scary you know like yeah i mean right. I, I, I i'm not rich now i definitely wasn't rich back then it was like all right and, yeah. I'm, I, and I, like going back to like explaining the baklava thing to like this kid i'm just like or like trying to convince him to sell something like dude i need to be working right now like why am i giving it to this like <laughs> this kid that's like four years younger than me like bro like i need to be working right now you know right um but yeah just taking the risk for fish seems to work so far you know and i recommend yeah, it if it makes sense you know if it's not a stretch because there is like a fine line it's like a stretch or like or a stretch or like taking the risk it's like all right you know what's gonna happen here like is it fomo or is it like because I, I i've pushed it with fish as well you know like i did 67 shows in a row and, and i was like really really confident and really wanted to hit 100 shows without missing a fish show and by the time i got to like 55 i'm like i'm not enjoying this like i used to you know like this is right. not as good as like this is i'm starting to stretch it and by the time i was like like i think 67 or 68 i'm just like did i like this is not like if i keep doing this it's not fun anymore i'm just like i'm using fish like a drug like i used to use drugs you know like yeah this is at, at, the, at the end drugs aren't fun. like in the beginning drugs are fun and like if you use them like you use like like i did definitely not fun you know yeah, man. Mm -hmm. And you, you, but you, it's not about in the, in the shows, seeing the shows is great, but like the sustainability thing is like giving back to it and it gives back to you. Like that's, totally. I talked to Aaron from No Simple Road, you know, he uh, interviewed him on the last season and we have been talking about like staying in the scene. He's like a deadhead and he's seen scene turnover at every, he's like, you know, if you just keep taking from it, taking from it, taking from it, like, you're going to run out of joy and you're going to run out of something. True, man. Like, it's true. You're going to run out of something. I like that. Yeah. 100%. And, uh, yeah. And you're, I mean, finding the way to like give back to it. I'm sure did that kind of like awaken the experience again for you a little bit where you look a little more like. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, like once I, once I kind of realized there for now, I'm, I'm in this really happy medium of like, there's no FOMO, you know, like I could miss a shit. Like it went from like, I can't miss anything to like, I can miss fish, you know, like it, yeah. and it was like a, a spiritual awakening. I'm like, what are they going to do if I'm not there? And it's like, dude, it's not all about me. You know, like, like what, it, like, yeah. what, you know, like the show goes on, man, you know? And 
I got through that a lot with like with uh, traveling. So I'm a, I'm really into travel. It's been since COVID started. It's kind of come to an end, but since COVID started, I got to like move to Mexico and work. I work for my computer, so it's like, where can I do this from? You know, that's I, I, once I realized that was possible. I'm like, where can I where can I really do this from? So I work from Mexico, all around Asia, all around Europe, Costa Rica, pretty, pretty much like 15 different countries on the long term. Like spent three months in Bali total, like six. I was just in Japan twice for a total like. I believe it was like seven weeks. I've been to Thailand like three times. Uh, it's, I spent over a year in Mexico and it's been like sick. And like, that's really helped soften the blow of like, not like, all right, um, the FOMO from fish is gone when I'm like, when I'm like eating like authentic sushi in Japan or something. But like, yeah, dude. I don't know. People are like, yeah, you live on vacation. I'm like, nah, dude, like, I don't, tra- or like, do you travel for work? I'm like, no, I work to travel, you know? And it, it's right. kind of the two biggest things I've ever had is travel and the two biggest hobbies that were probably the most costly hobbies are like tra- travel yeah. and fish. And then they tie together. Like you travel, do you see fish? And it's like, damn dude. And they're like, Hey, we haven't mentioned this. What about the festival, man? Oh man. Just, yeah. just announced in between. I like yeah. recorded with Sarah earlier and we didn't know what was going on. And then like, now, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut, get off, look at yeah, our I phones. Like, oh, shit. I'm like, what the heck, man? I'll go to that for sure. I I would have FOMO of missing a festival. I've never been to a festival before. There's certain things also like you got to cross off your fish resume and like your yeah. achievements and your merits and your badges. Never gotten a festival. Got game henge in, in, uh, in MSG. Oh, are you not? You, you, I saw your video, but I don't know if that was like, it seemed pretty real. Oh, that was based in truth, my friend. Gotcha, was... gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm out here in LA, so. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, pour a little out for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. It's, it wasn't that good, know. dude. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Right, yeah, dude. Yeah. Sarah, <laughs> Sarah was just doing the same thing. She's like, it wasn't, you know, the best was, night of all time ever. <laughs> didn't miss any. <laughs> um, no, but luckily, something cool. It's cool to see it all together. Uh, people yeah. that are nuts is like out of out of order or no narration. I don't know. Man. Like right. I, I left more confused about what Game Hedge was than when it started. You know. Um, yeah. But what's it called? I had seen all those songs before, which I was super stoked on. You know, like none of these songs are new, man. You know, like that 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 I was pretty proud of. And then like I don't know. I want to see the festival. The four corner thing sounds pretty cool. Like I would like to see fish in Florida. Like uh, yeah. What's it called? So, like, so I've, I've seen them in Maine and in Washington, San Diego. And then if we go to Florida, that's like four corners. Um, what else, man? Like, I don't know. You, can, you name it, you know? I haven't done it you yet. Gotta do, like, you got to do out. dicks, you know? Yeah, you got to do, do dicks, yeah. You got to like do MSG. Yeah. I have not done MSG still. At this oh, you never point. Um, yeah. oh, dude, MSG is the best. I was just, I was just with Sarah at Tool uh, at MSG. <laughs> That's also an experience. I go to go to MSG for a non fish show, you know, and it's like, dang, you guys are always here, <laughs> you know, like we guys, we see you guys like four times, like the, the staff and such, same people. Oh yeah, everybody yeah. in the house, yeah. yeah. You're like what? You're like what do you like better, tool or fish? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, that leads us to. I mean, what's I gotta know? What is what is the Probably best Alpine, show? Alpine, man, the- Alpine 2019. Were you there? I was at that one. You yeah, know, I was, at, dude, I was still I that living was in the best, Midwest. Man. So. That dude. closed it all out. You know, that, that leg of the tour, um, I definitely went into some detail on why summer tour 2019 was my, like, how it all started. Um, so, like, I got arrested. I, I won't go into the arrest story, but it's pretty nutty, pretty stupid. But, like, got arrested at, at Mohegan Sun, so missed those two shows. I was there, I was there but, like, didn't get in. And then my buddy spotted me for a lawyer and i uh what's Shit. it called I, I, i've paid him i've since paid him back a couple of years ago and uh he got me into alpine like it, it wouldn't have happened without him so shout out to billy for that and it was just like the first two shows i barely remember i wasn't sober for any of it uh but the night three dude like i remember we met these people in this hotel they were staying at and they play this like bingo something weird game where you write down like write down a set list like a dream like what you think they're gonna play i'm like all right i'll just write down my dream set list and like i think i called like 11 songs that night i'm like dude i just want to hear what i want to hear you know like this is what I'm, I'm chasing and they just played all like how'd you do that i'm like it wasn't me it was them you know uh but six shows the best dude you know like i used to like 
when I'm feeling like having a down day, I'll just like look at fish.net reviews of like, of like Alpine night three. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, right. Exactly know? that dude. Yeah. I, yeah. Every once in a while you gotta, exactly. you gotta check on it. Like it's your pinball score. You're like, I'm yeah, still exactly. up there. Yeah. I got it. Um, We're still doing good. What's it called? But yeah, everything that came with it, no complaints that entire show. Like I would never yeah, expect uh, Ruby waves to be the jam of the, of like, of, of the night or the tour or like that, that year. But like, I don't know, at the end, I'm like, I remember they went in, I remember they, they went into Ruby Way as like, he now, like run and like come back the and like, whole, like they switch it, you know, like this is another song and like four, 40 minutes later, 35 minutes later, like, dude, what the heck, man? It felt like the whole lawn left. I remember being on the lawn and just felt like everybody on the lawn I left. Beat them. There was waves. no line. I like, like, yeah. <laughs> like physically hauled ass to the bathroom because like it was like now or never, you know, like I, I like if they didn't, if they if they just kept like the the, the 1.0 songs, um, I probably would have peed my pants and been like fine with it. Like I'm not leaving. Oh, yeah. No, I wouldn't do that. Now I'm like uh, I'm on the journey of like no more FOBO. Like I'm not going to pee my, I wouldn't consider peeing my pants at a fish show, but like. <laughs> Then I'm like, bro, I, Ruby Way is like, thank you, Trey. For, and then, like, by the time I got Please. back, I feel like it, it was fast. I was like, in and out. And I'm like, this is awesome, man. That was like, I had seen Fish a bunch at that point, but I, it felt like that was like, oh man, especially after that jam. And mm -hmm. we had already gotten like a really cool first set with Meat Stick and like, oh, it was awesome. Avina Malkano, first Avina Malkano. Avina Malkano. Avina Malkano. Yeah. Summer, you know? The Olivia's pool to start the show that like no one, everyone was just standing dude. there like, what, what are we, what are we hearing? Um, I had no dude, idea what it, that was, dude. <laughs> like, I don't even know what I'm getting right now. So I was a bit new. I mean, by the end of this tour, it was like, I had done dicks. Uh, but like, I was like, I started at that tour with like 25 shows finished with like 50, you know, but there's still nice. like, like, I don't know. I don't know what to say. There's, there's still, I mean, there's still stuff. I'm just like, yeah, I don't know. You know? that moment was like my proudest moment of a guy who calls stuff. Cause I'm a dude, I'm a guy I'll come in too early on, you know, if it's they're play the curtain with like, I'll, I'll cheer too early for the with yeah, people yeah, are like, yeah. Oh, it's, this is not the with yet. Or like, I'll, I'll miss a woo, all that shit, nice. you know, I'll Same. woo too much. Like, but I, you know, they started Olivia's Our pool and I'm just like, I was like, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, and a bunch funny. of people that were around us, like old dudes were like looking at our young group of guys, like, what do you fucking know about this song? What is this? Yeah. New what do you know about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. Yeah. It's funny. You and you're from Wisconsin too, you said? Yeah, man. Oh, dude. How far away from there are you from? 40 minutes. So <laughs> dude, it's like. awesome, man. Everything's 40 minutes away out there also. I know. It's like this little, uh, you know, the end of the night drive home is just like a whole experience in itself. Like just yeah, getting through sure. those little back roads and. You know, you're still doing whatever you I have done. I took like tonight. an hour Uber. That was probably one of the more expensive Ubers <laughs> of like my life at, at that time. Uh, after after one of those shows, it's like, dude, yeah, I guess I'll come. It's gonna cost a hundred. Like that's the move, you know? It, it's far. It's spread out there. It's dude, cool, man. I never made the, it back. It's the best and the worst. It's I I love it. It's really sure. one of my favorite venues. People are like, it's so steep. They've never renovated it. You get arrested because the cops are the worst yeah, there. Yeah, like, arrested, yeah, yeah. they're so Peter bad. Yeah. Died and shit. I mean, yeah, I, I have no problems with it. People are like, I remember, like, everyone's like, it's steep. It's steep. It's steep. I'm like, I don't even remember that. Like, I was on the lawn pretty yeah. much two out of the three nights. Like, I don't know. I just don't even remember it. Maybe I remember it was pretty lumpy. You know, maybe, oh, maybe yeah. certain areas are steep. Yeah, it's just like some weird oddball venue. You know, it's far away from everything. They could just go like nut, get nutty out there. You know. The cops yeah, thing is wild, dude. You can't even <laughs> have a have anything out. Like you got to have everything put away. Like oh man, I, I'm watching guys our dad's age get like taken away in handcuffs <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. for smoking a bowl. No, for undercover. smoking a bowl, like and undercover man. He he like comes out. He's wearing the cargo shorts and the New Balances and like a yellow shirt. Yep. He's got a weird beard. Like it's like I, I don't know if you've seen Breaking Bad. Was like a supporting actor in the DEA who just has his like crazy yeah. mustache and beard. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I see it. He comes over. He's like, yo, man. Like, you got anything? I'm like, get away from me. Yeah, like, straight <laughs> up in Chapman. If you ask me, like, yo, you got anything? It's like, bro. Like, you know, probably like he probably wouldn't have gone down for that. But like, if I if I did, I probably would have been the one to go go down. I just like get a stranger danger. I just like stranger danger. You know, like get away from me, dude. I uh, have, ran, I have yeah, dude, I have interacted with 
undercover cops more often than I haven't at Alpine. Like (laughs) you get out of your car, like you pop your trunk and you start going through your backpack and someone walks up. They're like, hey, friends, we're rolling a fatty. If anyone has any papers, it's like, get the fuck out of here. Get away from me, sir. (laughs) Uh, Was that your first show if you're from there? No, that my first show um, was 2018 um, Allstate and I uh, in in Chicago. Chicago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen Fish in Chicago yet. I missed the it last one at the United Center. I was doing improv with a buddy who had been, you know, a guy who saw them through the 90s. And, you know, we talked fish all the time. And I had to, like, kind of, like, come out to him. I had to be like, you know, I haven't really seen a show. And he's like, what are you, t- what are you talking what do you about? Mean, like, you know? <laughs> we talk about fish all the time. Why do you know any of this stuff? If you haven't <laughs> yeah, yeah. seen them. So you're one of the ones like, that knew fish before seeing, like, you didn't just get, like, your mind, like, someone didn't just bring you and then, like, ruin, ruin or make your life for the better? It's no, it or did. Mixed- it made my life for the better. And it it did like it was like I knew if if fish was a glow stick, you know, I was like, oh, I know that this glow stick exists. But then like going to the shows, like it cracked open and then like was waved around no, and nice, was nice, lit, nice. Up, lit up. And, you know, I was like, oh, shit, dude. Like th- and then we had to leave- to how great that reference <laughs> <that> metaphor. Is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I just we had to leave the show early because I had a midnight show. I was hosting a midnight show at the time. And, you know, I was like profusely apologetic. I was like, I am so sorry that we have to leave right now. Like this is in my mind at the time, the best show I've ever seen in my life. And they were like, going tomorrow, going Sunday, like seen 300 of them. You're good, buddy. Like, you know. Did you go the next days? I didn't go the next days. I had like, dude, that's when I was deep in it with the comedy stuff. I was like Mm -hmm. teaching. I was like rehearsing all the time. I'm a huge fan of your career, man. You're on the the road, man. (laughs) You got Thanks, it. dude. I, it's been like you said, like the whole like giving to and giving or taking and giving back to the thing. Like it's been so sick to watch people have fun with the stuff. Like, yeah, totally. You know, to have fun with the videos and like, I, I'm, you know, I don't know. It's it's cool. Like You're taking off. I'm gets, proud of you. <laughs> yeah. Our scene gets so stoked for stuff, and they just support, mm-hmm. no, and they're really, just like dope. Like, yeah, down for the ride. You know, I want to be a part of something. You know, it's pretty cool. And yeah. like, I don't know, fish people have a pretty, like, generally have a pretty good sense of humor. Like, I remember I went to Dick's in, seven, like, 17, and it was really, really new. And, like, I went camping and, like, just, and we had no tickets, and it was really hard that year. And uh, we spent half the weekend online for Riri's. And uh, just, like, <laughs> interact. I, I was still so new. I'm just like, why is everyone so freaking hilarious? Like, my jokes are landing. Their jokes are landing. Like weird shit just happening all around like this is a freaking i already knew it's like all right fish is awesome i like seeing fish i love the music like i love going to the shows but it's still really new like understanding the bigger picture and like, it's just funny you know dude think about like, it like, funny, funny you know you've met uh, like i've met so many funny people who i don't know who they are we've met we didn't exchange shit like mm-hmm. but just like laughed my ass off with people all night and so yeah like they people are down to goof people are down to do bits people are down to goof that's the best way to put it that's the best way to put it and you think i don't know that you see sometimes like negativity online and you think that that's what it's gonna like be like at the show never it's never once Mm -hmm. like there's never like dudes like pissed off and like you know maybe someone doesn't want to get that's fine you know it's like i mean like one of my friends like has meltdowns and she's like dude what are you doing and like we're at one time we're like we're like in uh we we're in Pittsburgh in 2019, the fall tour, and he's just having like a meltdown after the show about like you were the blah, 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 blah. I don't even know what it's about. And then he's just like like freaking out on us, and we're just like, like, why are you so mad at us? That was such a sick show. And then he just storms off. And the people next to us are just like post fish glow, just like they're like doing balloons, just like Dude, why is he so fucking mad? You know, like, <laughs> and like someone said, so like did, did like an impression of him, and then like his whole crew were just, like, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. Yeah, it, was, it was pretty classic, you know. I don't yeah, know. It's not all positivity. It's like, all, but it is all humor, man. You know, fish oh, is yeah. funny. There's, it's if the so band's funny. funny. The people are funny. You know, the whole situation the whole ex- is pretty funny. You know. The ex- the, I mean, even just like thinking about seeing fish is such a funny band. Like on the grandest scale in Madison Square Garden on New Year's. Like the yeah, whole New Year's, yeah. And then it's four <laughs> nights too, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like when you that, tell like civilian I call them civilians. Like, yeah, they play like New Year's Madison Square. Like, oh, they must be pretty big. I'm like, 
Yeah, they also play four nights at New Year's. You know, it's not only one. You know. <laughs> yeah, not easy to get tickets. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah they, they sell it out. They do a pretty good job. For sure. Um, I was, when I was with Sarah, she was, we were like looking at Tools Instagram. Like, yeah, they have like four and a half million followers, but like they can't sell out Madison Square Garden like fish. It's does. crazy, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Dude, this dude, this has been a blast. Thanks yeah, so much for coming on the show, dude. Um, big of fan course, of dude. big fan of the show, big fan of you. So it's an honor to be on be on here. I'm a fan of the treats. I'm a fan of yeah, the baklava, dude. I think you should show up. I'll have to check tracking, but definitely enjoy that. Uh, if not, oh. we'll, if, it's, if it's lost in lost in uh, the mail, we'll get you some on tour. Should be, I'm gonna, should I'll, be tracking that. I'll be scarfing it down very nice. soon. Do you, do you have any shows that you're looking forward to coming up? Or uh, Next week, around the corner. I live in Bushwick now, so I got this place. I'm freaking stoked to have a home. Because I've been like couch surfing and traveling for the past, like, since COVID. And... Uh, Mike Gordon and Joe Russo and a couple, I forget who the other dude. I think there's like, a oh yeah, guitars. that's like two blocks over. And like, I don't know, I, used, uh, I got tickets and shit. It's on a random Tuesday, but like, hopefully have a, a few people over. I know here in Brooklyn, kind of break in the place a little bit, cook some food with Lonnie and uh, go see the show. So that's probably the one I'm most stoked for now. But I'd say, I don't know if I'm going to do the sphere. That's kind of 50, 50. I'm going to pass on Mexico this year. And then definitely, definitely the festival. I'm starting to see the rumors pour in. It looks like there's yeah. some Cali shows, maybe some Gorge again. Uh, I saw some shit about Austin. Who knows? I'm just waiting for summer tour to get announced. And it could kind of like, I won't be doing all of it, but I'm going to pick some three night runs. There might be some like New Orleans or something. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah, dude. But definitely a yeah, festival. Definitely Mike Gordon next, next week. That gives me enough to look forward to. Well, when they play, on the west coast which i'm praying that they will i'm just saying that's gonna happen you got a spot dude you yeah, always got yeah. a spot <laughs> rock, rock. at my place well, dude. Are you again? all right and that was an awesome conversation that i got to have with roy donk the king of the baklava um man Seeing that many fish shows in a row, not missing a show in like almost 70 shows is just, I, I mean, I'm sure for, for, like I said on the other episode, for some of you, I'm sure that is just like, of course, uh, <laughs> for me, that is a dream. That's what happens when I go to sleep at night is, is seeing that kind of, that kind of volume of fish shows. But um, Roy got himself around selling stuff, making stuff cool, um, being a positive influence on the scene. Um and man, I, I I just feel like he is a guy that you can learn from if you're trying to get into seeing jam bands or if you're um, trying to get yourself around all the shows and you don't have all the money in the world. That's shouldn't stop you. Uh, it's stopped me in the past. And after talking with Roy now, I'm like, man, I did it wrong. Should have done it like Roy. But uh, yeah, great conversation with him. I also have an awesome conversation with his buddy, Sarah um elaz on the other episode that is out this week right now sarah is a, uh, an incredible bassist uh an incredible new yorker uh she talks about seeing shows at msg seeing a bunch of fish shows uh <laughs> while injured you know just making sure that she gets to those shows these are two major fish fans i would love to hear anyone check these guys on their fish fandom um that would be hilarious to me um Check out that episode. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. Uh, if you're so inclined and you want more, we have got bonus episodes out right now on the Patreon. Um, just a little extra, little extra clips. If you pay $4 a month, you get early access to these episodes on Mondays instead of Tuesdays. Uh, you get bonus clips from the episodes. Um, I might be rolling out some merch here pretty soon. That's the big rumor. Um, but uh, yeah, check out the Patreon. Follow Osiris Media, um, follow The Best Show Ever on Instagram and on Twitter to get all the updates, all the little clips that I'm pumping out all the time. But until next time, guys, have a great show.